Amen. Psalm 138 verse 8. Welcome tonight. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. The Lord will perfect all that concerneth me. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. I want to speak very sharply tonight in this home church night on the subject secrets of divine completion. Secrets of divine completion. The Lord will perfect all that concerneth me. Want to be appreciative to God, want to honor God, want to adore Him, want to magnify His holy, precious name. For how far He has taken us through the coronavirus pandemic season. To the point where we are now. It is true. That we are not where. We want to be. But it is also true. That we are not where we used to be. As far as. This pandemic situation. Is concerned. There was a time. Where nobody went out. 24 hours lockdown. Deaths like flies in foreign countries like America. Today I spoke. A doctor from America communicated and said. That they are no longer recording any form of deaths at all. From coronavirus anymore. And because they are also discovering. Pro treatment protocols. Because they have seen that part of the pathways or the pathogenesis of this thing included clothing. And therefore they have added to their drug regimen drugs that will deal with that. So death is literally forgotten in terms of that situation right there in a particular place in that country. And so we believe that we are not where we used to be. We are not where we want to be, but we are no longer where we used to be. What will take us to the complete normal? I want us to take note of the following on this subject of secrets of divine completion. Number one, we serve the God who is Alpha and Omega. He is the God who is Alpha and Omega. The reason why he begins things is only because he will finish them. The reason why he begins things it's only because he will finish them. His ability to begin is connected to his ability to finish. His commitment to the beginning is equal to his commitment to the finishing. And this includes every other thing, every single thing in your life. So, we serve the God 
who is Alpha and Omega. Number two, God does not begin what he does not intend to finish. He does not begin what he does not intend to finish. If it was in his mind not to finish it, he wouldn't begin it. Is it a healing process that has begun in your body? It, is it a deliverance process that has begun in your life? Is it a journey of fresh encounters with God? Is it a situation around the world right now? If it was not in his mind to finish it, he wouldn't begin it. Thirdly, God does not begin what he has no power to finish. And of course, there is nothing he has no power to do. He does not begin what he has no power to finish. If he began it, it means he is powerful enough to finish it. Fourthly, God does not understand how to leave a process or project halfway. He does not understand how to leave a process or a project halfway. People may fail, but his project his program, his purpose must stand. If the process is to take Israel to Egypt, if Moses doesn't do it, Joshua will do it. But he doesn't understand. The people cannot remain stuck in the wilderness because Moses failed. God does not understand how to stop to leave a process or a project halfway. Number five is connected to number four. God will not bring you out of Egypt if he cannot take you into Canaan. He will not bring you out of Egypt if he cannot take you into Canaan. I'm on my way to destiny. I'm on my way to the promised land. Through the highway in the Red Sea, created by. The Lord Most High. I'm on my way to destiny. I'm on my way to the promised land. Through the highway. In the Red Sea, created by the Lord Most High. Oh Lord, you brought me out, so as to take me. You never brought me out to leave me. Halfway from my 
captivity into my destiny. You brought me up, Lord, to take me. Oh, Lord, you brought me out so as to take me. From my captivity into my destiny, you brought me out, Lord, to take me in. Oh, Lord, you brought me out, so as to take me in. You never brought me out. From my cup to to my destiny, you brought me out. Let it take me. Oh Lord, you brought me out, so as to take me. You never brought me out to leave me halfway from my captivity to my destiny. Brought me out, not to take me. He will not bring you out of Egypt if he cannot take you into Canaan. I don't know where God has brought you out of tonight. I decree, I prophesy. No devil can stop your journey halfway in the name of Jesus. No devil can stop your journey halfway in the name of Jesus. You are stepping into that promised land. You are stepping into that promised land in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. He will not bring you out of Egypt. If he cannot take you into Canaan. Every time the devil told you, you since you gave your life to Christ, things are not working. You see, you, if, you are, if you are an unbeliever, things would have been better for you. Tell the devil you are a bastard liar. He brought me out of Egypt because he's taking me into Canaan. He brought me out of Egypt because he's taking me into Canaan. Number six. God's faithfulness forbids him from starting without finishing. His faithfulness forbids him from starting anything without finishing it. His faithfulness forbids him. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. He said, being confident of this very thing. That he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He which, begun, which had begun a good work in you will perform it. Being confident of this, that he which has begun a good work will perform it. Faithful is he that begun it. Who will finish it? The faithfulness of God forbids him from starting a thing without finishing it. And beloved, God is not only faithful not to allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but he's also faithful to ensure that what he starts in your life is finished. 
What then are the secrets of seeing completion? Seeing the things God started in your life getting completed. Seeing the things God started in our land getting completed. Number one is faith for completion. You must exercise faith for completion. Faith for the completion or the finishing of what God started. There must be that faith for the completion or the finishing of what God started. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 He said For the which cause I also suffer these things Nevertheless I am not ashamed For I know whom I have believed And I am persuaded That he is able to keep I am persuaded I am not in doubt that anything is that is committed to him, you will keep it till the end. What is Paul the Apostle saying? I am persuaded that God will not fail halfway. I am convinced that God does not do half jobs. That faith must be established. That place, faith must be in place. That if God has done it so far, he will do it perfectly. I am persuaded. I am convinced. I am persuaded. I am convinced. Faith for the completion. Faith for the finishing of what God started. If you don't want things to stop halfway and you don't want then you, if now say it like this if you don't want things to stop halfway then you cannot believe halfway you can't believe when it started and stop believing for it to finish you can't believe halfway if you don't want things to stop in your life halfway you can't believe halfway if you don't want your miracles to stop to stop halfway you can't believe halfway Faith for completion is number one. Number two, praise for work already done. Praise for work already done. Many people are so busy looking out for what God is yet to do until they forget to praise him for what he has already done. That stops things halfway. They are so busy looking out for what God is yet to do until they forget to praise him for what he already did. Praise for work already done. Praising God for what he has done so far is key to crystallizing what is yet to be done. You remember the story of the lepers in Luke chapter 17. Ten were healed. One returned back in verse 15. And Jesus said, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Thy faith has made thee whole. The miracle was in process, but when he came back to praise, it was completed. That is part of what we'll be doing explosively and extensively tomorrow. Things are not where they are now, where they are meant to be by now, but things are not where they used to be. 
We are still in the process. We are still on the journey. Praise for work already done. Finally. Now, I said it like this. Appreciating for his current works is activating his future works. Activate, appreciating for the current works of God equals, sorry, appreciating for the current works of God equals activating the future works of God. Appreciating his current works is the doorway to activating his future works. Active, appreciating for what he has already done is activating what he is yet to do. That was what happened. So, we're going to praise God, celebrate like everything is the way they should be. That's number two. And finally, persistence for completion. Persistence for completion. Persistence for completion. Persistence. That is remaining there until everything is perfected. Remaining on your feet. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. It says that, that you be not slothful. Don't be tired. Don't be lazy. Don't be wearied. But be followers of people, of them who through faith and patience inherited everything. That you be not, it's easy to become slothful. It is easy to become tired, especially when resu results delay in coming. That you be not slothful. The, 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 Paul, the same Paul the Apostle in another place in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 said, be not weary. Now, here he said, be not slothful. There he said, let us not be weary. Don't be slothful. Don't be lazy. That is slothful. This one, don't be tired. Don't give up. For in due season, we shall reap. So we shall remain at it. Between us and the devil, the devil is the one that will be tired. He is the one that will be tired. He is the one that will be tired. Pr persistence for completion. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 said, the vision is for an appointed time. Wait for it. It must surely come. It must surely speak. It must surely answer. Wait for it. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until the change happens. Job 14, 14. I'm waiting. We are waiting. We are waiting. In the course of all this, God is showing a lot of Revelations and a lot of things. And a major pointer of the revelation is explosion of revival. Explosion. Massive crusade crowds. Massive congregational crowds that no devil can stop. No devil can stop it. So, we exercise faith for completion. We praise God for work already done and we persist until the completion happens and it shall happen in the name of Jesus Christ. I said it shall happen in the name of Jesus. I said it shall happen in the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet and let's lift up our voices and let's appreciate him because it shall happen. Let's worship him.